week 18, and we're going to be in excess of 30 minutes. Lots to cover. And from the evaluator's perspective, it is becoming quite evident who's putting the time and effort in to learn not only our rules, but our mechanics. For those of you that are doing the work, it is much appreciated. Let's start off uh, with a couple of formation plays and a couple of false starts. Here, we know the ball snapped at the 10, so we have a nice line of demarcation, and we can see the receiver, is his foot is in the neutral zone. So let's, let's get these players lined up legally and get them lined up early. A little bit of preventive officiating goes a long way. This is a minor point, but we want the players lined up legally. Similarly, on this play, we know the line of scrimmage is the 25, so we know that uh, our foot here is in the neutral zone. So get them back. Get the players lined up legally. Get them lined up legally early. A little bit of preventive officiating would help. I'm pleased to see we're not missing these. One, a two, three players in motion. This is correctly shut down as a false start. Good job by the crew here. One, two, three players in motion. Correctly shut down as a false start. Watch the quarterback. He gets away with a false start, and the crew incorrectly tags the defense. Watch the quarterback. Not that movement, but here it comes, right there. Watch him again. Here it comes, right there, that little hand shock. And you can see the right end, defensive end, reacts to it. This play needs to be shut down as a false start. This is the Spokane quarterback. He's been doing this all season, and he's going to, going to continue to do it until it gets called. We have got to get this and get it early. Right there. It's even getting a little closer. Full speed. There it is. See it again. There it is. Slow it down. Here it comes. There it is. Back to regular speed. There it is. Very slight, very effective. We tag the defense incorrectly on here. We have got to get this. One of the most subjective calls that we make are holding calls. Is it a hold? Is it not a hold? Did it affect the play? Was it big? So the only way we're going to get better at it is keep looking at the various type of holding plays that we see out there on a weekly basis. And uh, let's try to exhibit some good judgment. We're doing, for the most part, a real good job on the holds. Let's take a look at some of the plays from last week. Here's an interesting hold right here. Watch your right guard. His arms are going to be inside the frame, but look at the takedown. Just takes him right down to the ground. I don't know if that's some kind of fancy yoga move that's being taught now, but uh, you don't see the, the arms outside the frame. It's inside, he falls to the ground, and he drags, drags the defender with him. So uh, we got to get this one. It's kind of out in the open. Again, arms inside the frame, but he still takes him down to the ground. So we do want to hold here. Pretty good coaching there to get away with this. But uh, this is a hold. Again, even though the right guard's arms look to be, to be uh, inside the defender's frame, he still gets a good grab on him, falls to the ground, and pulls the defensive end down with him, that's a takedown. We want a flag. Watch the center here. We got an incorrect call for holding. You'll see the center has his hands inside, but at the time the ball is thrown, he and the offended player, they're still face-to-face. -face. You can see right there, they're still face-to-face, -face, two bears dancing. And until that uh, defender tries to make a move to get away, let's hold off on the flag. Because right here, he's just happy He's being held right there, and by the time he does make his move, the ball's away. So this would be a, a flag we do not want. Opening kickoff, gentlemen. We have to be ready to go. Watch what 25 does. Commits a reverse takedown right there at about the 25-yard line. That is big right there. Reverse takedown. And whether that runner went that way or this way, a takedown like this in the open field on a kickoff must be called. And our official trailing the play should see that. Okay, Be ready, guys. Opening play of the game 
you got to be ready for this. 100% focus, opening kickoff till the final gun. And if we don't get it the first time, watch what 25 does on the next kickoff. Same player, same defender, same reverse takedown, and we miss that. Just a reminder, guys, we have got to be on high alert. And these players, hey, they didn't call it the first time. I'm going to do it again. And here he gets away with another reverse takedown hold. Two missed calls on this play. First, watch the right guard. He's going to commit a hold. It's very subtle, but you're going to watch as the quarterback begins to roll outside where he's going to grab and pull the defender just enough to allow the quarterback to escape to the outside. Right there. Very subtle. Umpire should have a good look at that. That is big enough, and that is a hold we do one call. Okay. Now I want you to watch our uh, receiver here, number seven commits a taunt. Now, Red is up by something like 40 points or so late in the game. He's pointing to the scoreboard. Here it comes. Right there. That needs to be flagged. In a blowout, we have got to remain focused and get this kind of garbage. It's bad enough. Defense is getting killed in this game. They're getting crushed. And we have Red come in and taunt like this. That needs a flag. This is very late in the game. Nonetheless, we've got to keep control of this. Officials need to be focused, even in a blowout, and get this. That's unnecessary. I believe we're doing a real good job on the illegal contacts this season. Again, that's not an NCAA call, so I appreciate the hard work seeing these tough ICT calls. I think I got two plays up, and the second one's really tough. Don't want to fault the crew on it, but you can see how difficult some of these ICT calls are. Let's take a look. Not sure how the back judge saw it, but good job. Watch the illegal contact against this uh, receiver by a defender not mirroring. Right there. That's enough. Linebacker contacts him. That linebacker was not mirrored at the snap. This is a great call by the back judge. Superb judgment. Official on his key. Watch what this receiver does. He's trying to draw an illegal contact foul. Look at that. Great judgment not throwing a flag. Just great football officiating sense. That receiver is trying to draw ICT inside the belt. Good judgment by the official not throwing a flag. For illegal contact inside the belt, not mirroring. Great job. Sometimes we just have too much going on and we cannot physically see everything. Sometimes it would be nice to have that six official. But on this play, we're going to have uh, this defender commit illegal contact on a second receiver. Now, we've got one, two, three, four receivers stacked here. We've got uh, our head linesman knows he needs to get to the goal line. Line judge has a line of scrimmage. Umpire's watching inside. Back judge got everything coming at him. So there's no, uh, really can't fault the crew on here. But there is the contact right here is legal between these two players because he is mirrored at the snap. So that first contact is legal. But now we're going to have our second receiver coming across the middle and the contact's going to occur. That would be illegal contact by a defender not mirroring the second one. And just showing it so the crews are aware, someone might be able to see that. I'm not sure if the umpire can see that out of his peripheral, which we've talked about in the past. When you see a player get smashed out of your peripheral across the middle, as the umpire might see here, perhaps our line judge might see that, but he's still looking at his key downfield. Back judge coming in might see that. Again, we're just showing the play, not faulting the crew. This is a tough one. First contact's legal, second contact inside the belt, illegal contact. So we would want a flag here, but again... This is a very, very difficult play to see everything. Cannot fault the crew on this. We're just showing the play to let the officials know, hey, heads on a swivel at all times. No doubt the crew does have its head on a swivel. Sometimes we're just going to miss things. 
But uh, that double hit there is illegal, and if someone can catch that, that's going to be a tremendous call. Now this play is vaguely similar to the one we just saw, which was tough to get, but this linebacker, watch him commit illegal contact. He can contact the first one because that's who he's mirrored. But then he's going to contact the second receiver there, so that's illegal contact, and the back judge flags it. He sees it. That's a great job. Watch it full speed. That contact's okay. That contact is not. But what's the difference on this play? This is a running play. So, the crew came in and talked about it, and they picked up the flag. That is a great job by the crew. Superior call, recognizing illegal contact by a defender not mirroring, and then the crew saying, hey, this is a running play. Can't have ICT. Great job. The illegal defenses that we're seeing this season, we're not missing too many of them. So that tells me we're doing a real good job learning some of the odd rules in the IFL. Uh, now, at this point of the season, as we're getting better, we want to work on some of the judgment. So let's take a look. I think I've got seven or eight illegal defense plays, mostly dealing with the belt, which are one of the toughest IDs to get, and mirroring. So let's take a look at some of the plays. A couple things we're going to look for on this play. First, it looks like we have a foul for inside the belt not mirroring. Let's watch the play develop. Seems that uh, this defender is inside the belt and not mirroring, and it seems you'd want a flag, but let's slow it down and see at the snap. Well, what do we know? We know that this ball snapped at the 25, so the belt is the 20. So at the snap, which is right there, we're at the snap. He is not inside the belt at all, so he can be there. However, what he does is he penetrates the line of scrimmage, even though he's a covering a back coming out. This is an, an illegal blitz. So we need to have a call here. Line judge should see that. That's an illegal blitz. Okay? <clears throat> Next thing we want to watch is watch our uh, twist here. The right defensive end. Remember the ball snapped at the 25, and there's the penetration. He penetrates. Almost two yards right there, <coughs> excuse me, and the ball's still in the alley. So we want a flag here for an illegal twist. That is big enough, penetrating about a yard and a half while the ball's in the alley. So we want a flag there. So again, it looks like we have inside the belt not mirroring with this uh, player here. However, if we stop it right at the snap, right there, he is still outside the belt. So he's legal there. However, there he goes Penetrates the line of scrimmage for an illegal blitz. And, of course, we have our illegal twist here. Right defensive end penetrates about one and a half, two yards while the ball's in the alley. We need a flag there. Okay, here's a play. We know the ball snapped at the six. Therefore, the belt is the one-yard line. And I want you to watch our uh, defender here. He's clearly inside the belt. Remember, the belt is inside the one-yard line. Let's let the play start. And... Right now, eh, he's a line, but uh, our, our receiver is going to take an inside route, and our outside defender is just staying outside. He's making no attempt to move with that guy. He's just protecting to the outside. I'm going to stop it at the snap here. Right at the snap. Right there is the snap. He made no attempt to follow him. This uh, defender, we could probably call that alignment. You know, he's making an attempt, but we have two defenders inside the one yard line, which is the belt. So this cannot be an illegal, uh, cannot be a legal formation in any event. And our defender to the outside, he's just protecting to the outside. So this is an easy call for the wing. We have got to see that, and we've got to get this. This is a uh, illegal defense. Our defender is inside the belt, and he is not aligned with anybody. So we got to get that. Again, one more time, you can see he makes no attempt. He's just protecting to the outside. Look at that. Just protecting to the outside. He's well inside the belt, and our wing must see that and throw a flag. Good judgment exhibited by our official here. Ball snapped at the 25. What do we know? Then the belt is the 20 right there. That gives us a good line of demarcation for the belt. If we were at the 21 as the belt, we probably wouldn't call this. But here, no problem with the call. 
Let's stop it at the snap right there. And our defender here is clearly inside the belt. So that's good judgment throwing on this because why? We have a good line of demarcation, the 20. And he's inside the belt. He's not mirroring. So that is a correct call. Contrast that if the belt was the 21. We probably wouldn't call it that tight because we didn't have that line of demarcation. So this is just some of the things you have to remember when you're out here on the field. And our wing official here showed really good judgment throwing this. He's got his 20-yard line, is the line of demarcation, is the belt. The defender's clearly inside it. So go ahead and throw the flag. Player better move back. Good job by the covering official on this play. Here we'll talk about some judgment. We can work on this. Uh, he's definitely inside the belt, and he is definitely aligned right now, but our receiver is going to take an inside motion, and our defender here is going to kind of just be happy standing there inside the belt. Let the play run. And this was the very next play from the one we just saw, so I know it's tough to call this foul two times in a row, but here we got to do it. Again, with our philosophy, right now, He's making no attempt. He's just happy to be sitting there inside the belt. He's making no attempt to stay up with that guy until it's too late. And in this case, we would want a flag for this defender being inside the belt, not a line. He's making no attempt. He's just happy to be there. Again, this was the very next play from the one we just saw. And it'd be tough to have that flag twice, but if we got to do it, do it. This would require a flag here. Just keep that in mind. I understand judgment and everything else, but here the correct judgment would be flag it because that defender has no interest in moving across the formation. When the goal line is the belt, we call it tight. Get our defender's foot, his heel is on the line, toes clearly in front, and I'm just going to keep hammering this point home. We need to have a flag, and our back judge does. This is a good call. And we're going to keep hammering it at home. Players, when the goal line is the belt, put your toes on the line, not your heels. We will call it every time. And here's just a similar play. We know the belt's going to be here. Watch our defender here. At the snap, he's not inside the belt, so that's okay. He's not inside the belt at the snap but he's going to continue and penetrate the line of scrimmage. This is an illegal blitz. You can see the ball is still in the alley. This is an illegal blitz. Right in front of the line judge probably should see that. At DB cannot go into the backfield that far. I mean if he's a yard or so that's okay but uh, he's a good three yards. Even though he's not going towards the quarterback, he cannot be in that offensive backfield like this. This is an illegal blitz. I want you to watch our uh, defensive end and our nose here. We're going to have a call here for an illegal twist, but they never complete the twist. Right there you can see that is not a twist. And remember, we want these to be big. This is not a twist. Kind of looks like one. I can understand why the umpire missed this. But uh, they have to complete the twist for it to be a twist. He just spins, right defensive end just kind of spins around. And it looks like it might be a twist. But again, they have to complete the twist for it to be an illegal twist. Here's an excellent call for an illegal twist by the umpire. First, look at our umpire, preventive officiating. And then you're going to see our nose and end twist big time. Ball's in the alley and you can see it right there. Slow it down. End goes inside, the nose goes outside, and that is a big illegal twist. You can see it better when we slow it down. Ball still in the alley. Look who's looking right in there. Sees, the, sees it, flags it, continues to officiate the play. Great job. Mechanics in the IFL are not that difficult. So we're going to look at some mechanics plays. And again, if you're not getting the mechanics by now, you might want to consider whether the IFL is the right place for you to work. Our mechanics are not that difficult if you follow them. On this play, we're going to see a crew that does not panic. The kick's going to be blocked into the end zone. The kicker's going to pick it up, and 
squirrel a pass out to a eligible receiver. And I'll tell you what, if this uh, receiver breaks that first tackle, he's going to score. But uh, look at the crew. Just calm and in control on this broken play. Excellent job remaining cool and under control on a broken play like this. Nice work. Let's talk again about our delay of game mechanic. Here the play clock is three. Back judge should see that. When the clock strikes zero, back judge needs to go back to the ball and if it's not been snapped, flag it. Watch what happens. Three, two, one, and we have a flag and we're killing the clock. This is an incorrect call mechanically. When the clock strikes zero right there, the back judge should be going right back. And the ball has been snapped. We're now just wasting our time. This is too close. We shouldn't be talking about this in week 18. Real good mechanics by our headlinesman. Remember, when we're snapped between the 10 and the 15, we want our H to try to get to the goal line if you can. Excellent job here by the head linesman. Reading the play, being on the goal line, ready to signal. Beautiful work. Really good goal line mechanics first. We're going to have our declaring linebacker, and we'll watch the point by our back judge. There's the point to the declaring linebacker. And then what happens? What do we want? Back judge, get back to the wall as he does here. Our head linesman is going to get pushed into the end zone. And our line judge will cr crash across and read the play. Good goal line mechanics all around. Runner short of the line to gain. Everyone is where they need to be. Very good job. Let's talk about our basic head linesman's mechanics. And here's our H. When he reads pass at the snap, we're going to go downfield. Run. Chances are you're going to be retreating into the backfield and you'll see on this play why you want to do that go in the backfield because remember the offense is going forward so go back and pick up wall responsibility so here's a run play read pass he's sliding downfield but this is a run coming right at him and what is the best choice here the best choice would be to retreat into the backfield and then pick up wall responsibility and because that choice wasn't made and look what happens our back is turned to the play, and we do not see anything. We take ourselves out of the play when we do that, just running for our life. Again, so if you read and run and it's coming at you, chances are your best move is take a couple steps backwards, turn, and pick up wall responsibility. We don't want to be running away from the play if we can help it. because you can see, we turn shoulder, and we saw this last week. We can't have this. Take yourself right out of the play, and here we got a loose ball. No bags down and no sense of urgency to point direction. So again, headlinesman at the snap, yes. Pass, we're sliding downfield. And remember, wings, when we move downfield, shuffle. Keep your shoulders square to the wall. Do not turn shoulder officiate until you have to. And again, on a 50-yard field, that's going to be very rare. When the run comes at you, your best move is to step into the backfield and prevent this kind of uh, trouble. Just causing trouble for yourself here, making things more difficult because you're taking yourself out of the play. So when the run's coming at you, step into the backfield, pick up wall responsibility. Here's some good basic mechanics. I want you to watch our headlinesman here. Now over the years, I've seen a lot of uh, wings not go to the goal line when they see the play coming at them. And here, the play is coming right at the wing. He could have easily just gone into the backfield here. Instead, he makes the effort to get to the goal line. He's going to get pushed into the end zone, and that's fine because what do we have? Our umpire at the goal line steps back. I'm sorry, at the snap steps back to the goal line. So watch the play develop. Wing reads it, sees the play coming at him, and he takes off right for the goal line. He's going to get pushed off, but look what we have right here. Working back to the spot. Let's look at it again. First, let's watch our umpire. Umpire, where do we want him? At the snap to the goal line. Watch the umpire. At the snap to the goal line. Good job. Watch our wing. Read the play. Sees it coming right at him. 
he's still going to make the attempt to get to the goal line. He's pushed off. He's got wall responsibility. But our umpire is sitting right there. And then our umpire decides, well, yes, he's down short. Comes back, works to the spot. Great mechanics by this crew on this play. Watch the umpire on this play. The ball snapped at 11. The belt is the 16. The linebacker is inside the belt. Look at that preventive officiating. How superb is that? Watch what the umpire does. Just pulls him back to the 16. And the player knows, hey, okay, he's, the umpire's helping me out. Love that. Let's just watch it one more time. Just superb, superb preventive officiating right there. Great job by the umpire. Next up are our weekly reminder plays. And I think every reminder play this week should help you as you get ready for your fall season because I think they all have some sort of effect on what you're going to be looking at this fall. So look hard, and here we go with this week's weekly reminder plays. Here, line judge and the referee, remembering the play is not over until the players separate. We've got these two players here tangled up, and you'll see both our line judge and our referee coming in there and preventing it from escalating with a presence physically and their voices. Remembering the play is not over till the players separate. Great job here. Another example of good dead ball officiating after the play is over. Look at the crew hustle in there with a physical presence and a voice presence to quell any potential nonsense. This is what we want. Good job by the crew here. Take control. Let's just write this one off to nothing less than a disaster of an officiated play. It's fourth and two. The line to gain is in play. And look at the mass confusion. We've got one official killing the clock. Change of possession. We've got another official on top. He's got the runner down. Well, maybe he was killing the clock. Now he's indicating we have a first down. So, guys, when you're in a fourth and short situation, let's focus. Let's realize where the line to gain is. Officiating instinct must take over. Line judge, go ahead. Get down to the line to gain. H, you're going downfield, but come on back. Set up on the line to gain. We cannot have this confusion on fourth down later in the game when the line to gain is in play. And then, of course, uh, look at this down there. Why is that coach inside the numbers making the call? That coach needs a flag. Look at that. Again, we're just going to write this off to just a disastrously officiated play. And when you have fourth and short and the line of gains in play, gentlemen, let's not let this happen again. Focus. Remember, stay on your keys. Uh, even in this situation, everything's going to be jammed up here in the corner of the end zone, so someone's got to see this. But key-wise, where are we at? We're uh, headlinesman's here. Back judge is going to be here. Line judge is going to be across the field. Ugh, there we go. But let's watch the action. We're going to have a, a block here. Offensive pass interference missed call. Right there. Clear space. And uh, need a call here. Again, if you're on your key, just for a second, remember, let's do our timing. Let's see how long this thing takes. One, one thousand, two, so not even two seconds if you're on your key. You're not going to miss this as OPI. we got to have this. Remember the basic rule. We can only have one forward pass per down. Here, backwards pass, forward pass one, forward pass number two. So we'd want a flag here, even though the, play, uh, the ball was intercepted. And when do we determine... How do we determine whether a pass is forward or not? Well, there's a spot of the forward pass, and a pass is forward if and only if it first strikes something. That would be a player, an official, or the ground beyond the spot where the pass was thrown. So here's the spot where the pass is thrown, and it's going to strike something, a player, beyond the spot where the pass was thrown. So that's a forward pass, and our line judge, first of all, I don't know why he's moving downfield. He needs to be situated right on this line of scrimmage till the pass clears. 
he started moving. But he's got to see that. Even from that angle, you can clearly determine this is two forward passes. We'd want to flag, and even though the ball was intercepted, we still want to flag down. So remember, only one forward plat excuse me, only one forward pass per down. We talked about this last week. Scrimmage kick formation, there is no belt. He's legal. He's legal. Watch what happens at the end of the play. And remember, whether this is a busted try or not, the team was in scrimmage kick formation. Therefore, there is no belt. Watch up here. Here comes the late flag. For defender, inside the belt, not aligned. Crew comes in and talks about it. Hey, wait, didn't we see that on last week's training tape? Yeah, we did. Okay, good. Let's wave it off. And the crew correctly waved off the flag. So good job getting together and talking about it and getting it correct. Remember, players and officials, in scrimmage kick formation, there is no belt. This point in the season, here's another thing we really shouldn't be talking about. Remember how we're going to call our kicks. Onside kick situation, goal lines of playing a glass. Whether this is an onside kick or not, it kind of is. You can see. I don't know why they're onside kicking with this huge lead. Nonetheless, at contact with the ball, which is right there. Right there is the contact with the ball. How many of these players are offsides? Broken the plane of glass. Broken the plane of glass. Broken the plane of glass. This is a foul. This is officiating 101, and we should not be talking about this in week 18. The goal line here is a plane of glass, and even if it were not, even if this kicker kicked away, this is big enough to call. So whether we're onside or not, offsides, 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 offsides. We have got to have better focus, gentlemen. We shouldn't be talking about this in week 18. And this is the, uh, apparently, I think this is the second time in this game where we had kickers offsides and we did not have any flags. We talked about this earlier in the season. Situation, uh, the defense is up, I think, by 19, and there's under a minute to go. We got a correct call for holding by the center. Okay, let's watch the hold. It's a takedown. Remember, the offense is trailing by 19. So we got a correct call for a hold. What did the crew do? They put this hold in the end zone. Here, we just ne need to use a little bit more common sense. The game's over. The team with the ball is losing by 19. There's under a minute to go. I think there's three plays left in the game. Why don't we just put that hold on the one-yard line? Let's not put it in the end zone. We say no cheap safeties. Well, at the end of a game and a blowout, and the team committing the fouls on the butt end of that blowout, this is the cheapest safety of the season. We have got to use better common sense. We'll end this week's video with a look at several safety type plays. One that's becoming bothersome, we've talked about this uh, especially recently with the players' helmets coming off and knowing what a foul is and what a foul is not. So pay some attention this week. Let's not miss these calls in the future. Big safety issue. I want you to watch the nose. His helmet's going to come off, and he's going to continue to participate in the play. Helmet's off, and that is participation. We want to err on the side of safety. So uh, that is participation in the play. We need a flag on the nose. And remember, if the runner's helmet comes off, we want to blow it dead. We cannot miss these type of safety fouls. Again, nose's helmet comes off. Does he move to participate? Well, with this action, we're going to err on the side of safety and throw the flag. Now, watch the left defensive end here on this uh, scrimmage kick. You're going to see his helmet right down there on the goal line. Right here, it comes off. Watch again. And he does not move to participate in the play, so good no call here. That's what we want. When the helmet comes off, that is not a runner. If he's a runner, we're going to shut it down. But here is a perfect example of the player whose helmet comes off. He does not move to participate. 
correctly, we do not want a flag here. Here's a big miss. Look at our defensive end. Follow him as the play ends into the wall. Play's over, and he needs to come in with his nonsense. Do we need that extra punishing shot? Number eight, you can see him dip his shoulder and make that extra contact. We've talked about this all season of players showing great discipline. This is a lack of discipline. The runner is down. The contact is late. It's not necessary. It's a punishing blow. And we have two officials, actually three officials, one, two, three, and nobody wants to flag it. Unacceptable. I stuck this play in just as a reminder to the players. Watch number five here. The runner's going to be down. Forward progress is stopped. And number five is going to take a launch right there in an attempt to deliver a punishing blow. Players, if five connected here, he would have been fined by the league office. Just remember, guys, the runner's down. Restraint is usually the best thing. So no need to launch. Good thing number five did not connect. But if he did, he would have been a little bit poor this weekend. We do not want to find the players. So be careful, players. I want you to watch the action here by the left guard. He's going to strike the defender right in the head. Now, the foul report said this was striking, which is under the IFL rulebook 112C3A, which would require a disqualification, a live ball foul treated as a dead ball. But here, a live ball foul was enforced, and we replayed the down um, we probably just want to call this an unnecessary roughness here instead. Play wasn't certainly violent enough to warrant an ejection, I don't believe. So I, and I don't think he was ejected, but uh, let's get our terminology correct in the foul report, okay? Good call by the wing here. That is definitely a strike. Don't think it rises to the level of an ejection, but uh, let's just call it a UNR, unnecessary roughness. Good job getting this getting this uh, foul here. Here, let's watch the left guard. He's going to go for a low block. He's going to miss. He's just going to roll over and leg whip the defensive end. Misses, and there it is. Goes the block low, misses, and throws the old leg whip in there. Slow it down. Excellent job by the referee being focused in there and flagging this. Flag comes in. Referee processes it. I see it. I just didn't see a trip, did I? And then the flag comes in. Great job by the referee on this play. This is a tough one to see. We don't see it that often. Very good job by the referee recognizing this as a trip right there. That's dangerous. We can't miss that. And we don't. Good focus, referee. One week to go, gentlemen, in the regular season. Two of the four games have playoff permutations. I believe home field advantage is at stake in two of our games. The other two, no playoff permutations. However, our players are playing to put film out there and to get signed to NFL contracts as soon as the season ends. That being said, an official must remain focused whether his game has playoff potential or not. The players are playing hard. They're playing to move up to the next level. They've got one game to go to get tape. And as officials, we must remain focused no matter what game we're working this weekend. If the game becomes a blowout, the sign of a good official is how focused they remain in the blowout games. That being said, let's go out and close out our final week of the regular season with superior officiating in all four venues. Thank you.